Hey everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Smith and I'd like to welcome you to this video, part of the Thyroid Mastery Series. And today, what we're going to talk about is a problem called underconversion of T4 into T3. This is one of the primary reasons why people have hypothyroid problems. Our bodies are composed of cells and we can think about the can, you can think about it this way. We are basically a giant walking, talking bag of cells. And every single cell in your body needs some basic things to make it operate normally. All the cells need oxygen. They all need nutrition. And they all need thyroid hormone in order for it to work correctly. Thyroid hormone is going to control uh, a couple of different things in the body one of them is called the basal metabolic rate. We're going to get to that in a minute. And so the thyroid hormone enters the cell through the cell wall and it goes right to the nucleus of the cell and it energizes the cell. This happens with every cell in the body. There are about 75 trillion cells in your body and they all need thyroid hormone in order to work correctly. The basal me metabolic rate is the rate at which your cells use energy. And there are a couple of different uh, ways that your, your cells use energy. One is from activity, one is from thermogenesis or uh, creating body heat, and the other is the basal metabolic rate, which is how much energy it uses while at rest. 60 to 75% of all of the energy in your body is used for the basal metabolic rate. You wanna think about it like this way. Thyroid hormone is kind of like the accelerator pedal in your car. And when you step on the accelerator, the car speeds up. And if you take your foot off the gas, the car slows down. And hypothyroidism is a state in which your body is not getting enough thyroid hormone for normal cellular function. And it's because of a couple of different things. Either you're having a problem making thyroid hormone, you're having a problem transporting hormone from point A to point B, you're having a problem converting T4 into T3, which is the focus of this video, and you're having a problem absorbing thyroid hormone. Here are some of the common symptoms of hypothyroidism. People have low energy or feel fatigued all the time. You have weight gain. You can't lose weight. Even diet and exercising isn't going to help. Your hair may be thinning or maybe dry and brittle, maybe coming out in the shower in clumps. You're noticing the loss of the outer one-third of the eyebrows, weak or cracked nails, either fingernails or toenails. You could have some GI issues like constipation, diarrhea, bloating and gas. You could have some brain-based issues such as brain fog, depression, or anxiety. You could have low libido or sleep problems like insomnia, problems falling asleep or getting to sleep. You don't necessarily have to have all of these, but these are very, very common with people that have hypothyroidism. And in this presentation, we're going to discuss an issue of underconversion of T4 into T3. And this is a very common problem, and yet it accounts for a lot of hypothyroid symptoms. And yet, interestingly, it remains misdiagnosed and underdiagnosed by most medical doctors, including endocrinologists. So your thyroid gland makes three basic hormones. It makes T4, which is thyroxin, and 93% of all thyroid hormone made in the thyroid gland is T4. This hormone is inactive, meaning it's biologically inert, it doesn't do anything. T3, which is triiodothyroxin, represents 7% of all the thyroid hormone that's made in your gland, and T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. And then you have calcitonin, which is involved with calcium metabolism, and we're not gonna get into that in this video. Here's the molecular structure of T4. And T4 has four iodine molecules attached to it. There's one here, two, three, four. These eyes represent iodines. So there are four iodines attached to T4. That's how it gets its name. Here's the molecular structure of T3, or triiodothyroxin. One, two, three iodines attached to this one. So that's pretty much the difference between T4 and T3. T3 is missing an iodine. 
Now, in order to um, in order to recapture and utilize T4, it has to be converted into T3. So what happens is that we said before T4 is inactive, can't be used by the body, and yet we want to try to use as much thyroid hormone as we can. So we have to convert T4 into T3. And I want you to think about this kind of like if you were to travel to Europe and you wanted to go to Paris and buy some cool clothes and some souvenirs, but as an American, you have dollars in your wallet. Well, you can't use dollars because that's not the type of currency that they accept over in Europe. They use euros. So you have to convert your currency. You have to convert the, the dollars into euros. Similarly, in your body, you have to convert the T4 hormone into T3 hormone so that it will work in your body. And this, play, this conversion process, it takes place in your liver and in your gut. So here is the thyroid pathway in a nutshell. Everything starts off in the brain up in here. And when you have enough dopamine and serotonin, which are neurochemicals, it acts upon the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus in the brain makes thyrotropin-releasing hormone, or TRH. When the hypothalamus makes TRH, the TRH goes to the pituitary gland in your brain, and the pituitary makes another hormone called TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. When you make thyroid stimulating hormone, it goes into the circulation and reaches your thyroid gland, which is this butterfly shaped organ, and your neck. And your thyroid gland, when it has tyrosine, iodine, and TPO, thyroid peroxidase enzyme, this makes T4 and T3. 93% is T4, this is the inactive form, and 7% of it is T3, which is active. When the T3 leaves the thyroid gland, it can immediately be used to create and influence the basal metabolic rate, so it goes right over to your cell, and it can be utilized. T4 has to be converted into T3, and this takes place, this conversion process takes place in your liver and also in your gut. So 60% of this hormone right here goes into the liver and it, and it gets treated to an enzyme called 5' prime monodiodinase. And when that happens, it converts it into T3, cleaves off one of those iodine molecules, turning it, turning it into T3, it leaves the liver, and 60% of this goes right over to your cells where it can be used. Another 20% becomes reverse T3, and then the last 20% becomes T3 sulfate, T3 acetyl sulfate, and then this stuff goes into the circulation, goes over to your gut or your GI tract, and it gets treated to hydrogen peroxide and bacteria and your gut, and that becomes T3. So you can actually recapture 80% of this stuff right here, which is how your body recaptures all that thyroid hormone. So in order for this process to work correctly, you have to have a healthy brain, you have to have a healthy thyroid gland, you have to have a healthy liver, and you have to have a healthy GI tract in order to make all this work. The medical community does not take into consideration enough of this, in my opinion. And all they really do is they look at the TSH T4 loop. So if your TSH is high and your T4 is low, you are diagnosed as hypothyroid and you're given some kind of a medication to boost up your T4. But the problem is, what happens if your TSH is normal and your T4 is low, or I'm sorry, what if your TSH is normal, your T4 is normal, and you still have hypothyroid symptoms? Well, is your doctor checking your T3 levels? If he's not, why not? You may have a problem. So if you have normal TSH and you have normal T4, but you have low T3, you have a conversion problem. You're not converting T4 into T3, which, as I said, takes place mostly in the liver and also, to a lesser extent, in your gut. Only 7% of the T3 in your body is going to come from your thyroid gland. So you have, to, you have to measure T3 because if you're not measuring them, then you have no idea what's going on. What if the only thing that your doctor is doing is the standard of care, meaning he's only checking the TSH and T4? Wouldn't you agree that if this is going on, you're not getting all the information needed to correctly understand your situation? How can you accurately diagnose your problem with much of your data missing?
The answer is you can't. But unfortunately, that's what you get with a standard of care. Underconversion of T4 into T3 is a very, very common problem, and it can come via problems associated with the liver or the gut. And some of these problems can include having a fatty liver, dysglycemia, which could involve abnormal blood sugar physiology, such as insulin resistance or uh, prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, excessive toxicity due to chemical exposure from processed foods, cosmetics, heavy metals, formaldehyde in the carpeting, solvents, paint thinners, and a lot of very common everyday items. In your gut over here, you could have problems such as leaky gut syndrome, a problem called dysbiosis where you have an abnormal ratio of bad bacteria to good bacteria. That's why folks take probiotics. You could have infections, inflammation, gluten exposure, chemical irritation from eating certain foods and a lot, other, a lot of other things that are going to wreck your gut. So if you have an unhealthy liver or an unhealthy gut, that's certainly going to cause problems with your body's ability to convert T4 into T3. Now in order to fix your problem, we need to know the source of the issue. It's not enough just to throw drugs at the problem in some kind of a desperate hope to get, achieve some kind of temporary symptomatic relief. You're going to achieve much better results if you fix the problem by finding and removing the hidden root cause, or what I refer to as the triggers. You have to address your cause, not just address the symptoms. And the current standard of care that is utilized by 99.9% .9 of all medical doctors, regardless if they're primary care physicians or endocrinologists, is only to measure your TSH and T4 levels. It doesn't really drill down any deeper than that. And so you're never going to figure out the cause of your problem if that's the only thing that you're doing. You're going to achieve the better results if we actually take a more comprehensive global view of your problem and find out how is this problem affecting your liver and your gut to see if you actually do have a, an issue with those organs and if you are under converting T4 into T3. And this is what I refer to as the functional medicine model. It takes into consideration everything, not just certain things. So what comes next here? If you're having a problem with hypothyroidism and you're having these issues, even if you're taking all the medications that your medical doctor prescribed for you, and even if your lab tests according to him are normal, then you need to schedule a phone consultation with me to see what could be causing your hypothyroid issue. Before you can find out if I can help you, I have to find out if I can help you. And it all starts with a phone consultation. So in order to schedule a consultation, you can do this one of two ways. You can go online to our website, integratedmetabolic.com, and click on the link for hypothyroidism and schedule a free 15-minute phone consultation with me. Or if you prefer, you can just give me a call directly at 412-595-7332. I live in the Pittsburgh area. Pennsylvania, but even if you don't live near me, we can still do distance consulting for people outside the Pittsburgh area. I work with people from all over the country. So if you're having a, a, a thyroid problem and you want to get some help for this, reach out to me. Let, let's figure out what's going on and let's get you some help. Thank you very much for checking out this video and I hope to hear from you.